After fully grasping and mastering 35mm film photography, it's only a matter of time until you see the larger negatives of medium format. For a more exaggerated bokeh, different aspect ratios, larger resolution, etc., most film photographers, at some point, begin to lust over medium format. However, knowing where to begin, especially with the variety of cameras at different price ranges, is quite overwhelming, to put it lightly. Thus, in this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the cheapest medium format cameras that you can still buy today. A quick note before we start, I have made two of these videos in the past, so if you're looking for more cameras or think that I've missed a glaringly obvious one, here's a list from those videos, so make sure to check those out after this. The first camera on the list is the Zeiss Iconta 521. Famously manufactured by the legendary Carl Zeiss company, the Iconta 521 is a small German folding camera and was manufactured from 1938 to 1954, so it is quite an old tool. It is a 645 folding camera and comes with a very affordable price of around $60 on eBay, but depends on the shutter and lens combination you'll get. Despite no rangefinder, no zone focusing, and no light metering, the Iconta leans into the small form factor and takes up no real space. The lens is a fixed lens equating to roughly 75 mm on 645. When purchasing these cameras, inspect the lens for haze as you would with the rest of these, but also make sure you're checking the bellows doesn't have any tears or holes in them, as those can be quite tricky to replace. As far as a pocketable, cheap, medium format camera goes, the Zeiss Iconta 521 is an amazing camera to top off the list. Next up is the Lubitel 2. When it comes to twin lens reflex cameras, many of the popular ones cost upwards of three to four hundred dollars. While personally, I think some of the Yashica, Minolta, Mamiya, Rolleiflex models are well worth the price, there are a variety of really bad mid-tier TLRs that just generally are not worth your time. Thankfully, this is where the Lubitel 2 fits in quite nicely. This Soviet-era classic camera gives you that mid-tier quality of TLRs in medium format while only asking a mere $60 on average from what I'm seeing on eBay. The camera is surprisingly robust and dense for a cheap camera, but feels very high quality still. Now, the camera does seem to look a bit like a toy, but it is far from it. Additionally, the manual focus is super small on the camera, so that can be quite tricky, especially if you have larger hands but it can still be used effectively. Regardless, I think the Lubitel 2 is a great catalyst to spark your interest in TLRs and medium format without breaking the bank. The third camera on the list is the Chinese TLR Siegel 4B. While I haven't ever used these or really even heard of these before researching this video, I keep seeing these Chinese TLRs in high regard. The 4B can shoot both 645 and 6x6, which is pretty unique for a budget TLR camera. Like most other TLRs of this quality and style, there is no light meter. Additionally, one significant downfall is the delicate leaf shutter. Never cock your shutter before adjusting the shutter speed or you will jam your camera up completely. Also, there's only 10 shutter speeds, including bulb, so there isn't a ton of flexibility with that, but the fast 75mm f3.5 lens makes up for it. The almost entirely metal camera comes in around $120 on average, and is a tremendous jumping off point for medium format if you don't mind dealing with some of its shortcomings. Next up for cheap medium format cameras is Kodak 66. This 6x6 folding camera was made between 1958 to 1960 and is the last ever model of folding cameras made by Kodak. The 75mm f4.5 lens springs from the body and only allows 6 shutter speeds including bulb setting. Additionally, you have to scale focus via the lens instead of a rangefinder or anything comparable to a normal 35mm SLR and there is no in-body light metering. Now despite what sounds like a lot of downfalls, it is the cheapest camera on the list coming in just around $50 or below and is well worth the cheap gamble to get into medium format. The 
The fifth camera on the list is the Kiev 6C. This Soviet 6x6 camera is almost an identical copy of the popular Pentacon 6 cameras and is the first Kiev medium format camera to ever be released. As with many Soviet cameras, you must remember to always cock the shutter before changing shutter speed, otherwise gears inside the camera will break. This did happen with my buddy's Kiev 60, so just be aware. Going up to 1 1,000th of a second and allowing for a TTL viewfinder, it truly is probably the best medium format Soviet camera and comes in in an extremely affordable price for what you're going to get. For around $160, you're getting an incredibly cheap 6x6 that mimics one of the greatest historical cameras ever made. There are numerous lens options that are pretty affordable as well that give you a variety of different focal lengths. The camera may be huge and loud, but that just adds to its character in my opinion. This camera is still a phenomenal medium format camera that will stand the test of time and can be enjoyed years to come. I truly think on the list this might be the best bang for your buck camera as it is quite cheap yet offers quite a lot of flexibility and control with all of its hardware. Next and second to last is the Agfa Clack. Known by its name for the shutter sounds it makes, the Agfa Clack is also known as the Agfa Weekender in the US markets interestingly enough. Created out of the ashes of World War II in Germany, rose this 6x9 seemingly artistic toy camera. Despite its tiny size and nature, you can still control the aperture. The camera is a masterpiece of simple design and maintains the usefulness of the box camera even into the era of rapid improvement in photographic technology. A camera that could be purchased and used by anyone and followed the old statement from Kodak, you press the button, we do the rest. Additionally, the cameras are surprisingly sharp for being so tiny. Coming in around $60, it certainly is one of the cheapest, most intriguing cameras on the list. As a camera, the Clack certainly makes for a conversation piece, a usable box camera, and a bit of history and collector piece. Well worth the investment if you can find one in an affordable price. Plus, the cameras are fun to use and produce a big 6x9 negative, and given that the camera is landscape rather than portrait orientation, it makes it even more awesome. And last up, but certainly not least, is the legendary Mamiya C330. Arguably the best C-series camera and a top-tier TLR camera, the Mamiya C330 is surely to impress. Being a high-quality bellows system camera, it allows for really close-up focusing, which is great for portraits and macro shots nonetheless. On top of that, there's a really great selection of lenses available, so there's a high ceiling for mountability and crafting the perfect user experience with the Mamiya C330. To my surprise, you can still find these incredible cameras on eBay for only around $140, which kind of blew my mind. Now, it won't be mint by any means, but some decent ones are out there. The images from the Mamiya C330 are exceptionally sharp and detailed and totally hold their own with even some of the Hasselblad Zeiss lenses. For a bit more money than some of the more consumer-friendly cameras on this list, plus some patience, you should be able to easily scoop up one of these Mamiya C330s for an affordable entry point into medium format. That'll wrap it up for my list of cameras. I really tried to make it as cheap and as budget friendly as I possibly could. In the previous two videos, I suggested some more expensive, but I think higher quality options and really wanted to find some that were generally under the $200 mark. Otherwise, what cameras do you think I've missed that are cheap? What camera did you guys start learning medium format on? I always think it's interesting to see what camera was the quicksand to getting you into spending more money on film. <laughs> Otherwise, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next video, peace out and stay safe. Adios.